There's a little game I play at the end of all my seminar. It's called BID before I die. What I want you to do is very simple. Get a piece of paper, write down the word before I die. The five things you want to do, write. Seal it up and open on your birthday three years down the road. Uh, you must understand, right? And let me give you an example. Over the years of doing this, many years now, I must have spoken to a lot, do a presentation like this for many, many people. So what I'm going to show you is some of people's wish lists of things they want to do before they die. Right? Let me show you. The first one is video mother's cooking. You know, now high tech. You don't really need to go and write down people's uh, recipe now. So this young man who I do a talk, right, uh, came up and said, yeah, and nowadays I want to video my mother's cooking. And he did, he did. I'm pleased for him. He said, one thing you want to do before you die. I met another uh, gentleman who is a CEO of a big multinational. And I thought, one of his wish lists was how to make kueh lapis. Now, you must understand, kueh lapis is an Indonesian cake. And it's not easy to make. You must do layer by layer and layer. But he actually did it, by the way. Now, it's not exactly the kueh lapis, but it's not that bad either. But he did it. When I was in Malaysia, I was doing a talk for uh, at, a, at, a, at a bookshop. And a young lady came. And his wish list was very good. You see a lot of shows like Casino Royale, you know, where people put loads of money into one number on a roulette table. This lady's wish list was, I just wish I can put a... She sent me an email, by the way. Put a... She went up to uh, Genting uh, Casino, took a thousand ringgit, and went up there and put on one number. Just something that she wanted to do all her life. But unfortunately, never tell me whether she struck or not. But there are also things that is slightly not so happy. Uh, like the next one, say sorry to my daughter. Uh, it was in a, in a company's talk that I gave. And a woman stood up and said, all my life, I want to share, all my life, I've learned to appreciate the one person that very close to me, which is my daughter, which I thought is normal story until she went into the story. You see, she got two daughters. The younger one grew up, star performance, A student, everything, do very well and went on to do, uh, go overseas, study, came back, got a corporate job, high flyer. The mother is so proud of her. Every time she talks about this elder daughter and how she excelled, right? She married a uh, Caucasian and went to stay in uh, UK and all so happy. You know, mother was so proud and the daughter was so great, you know. The second daughter, by the way, wasn't a, a fantastic achiever. She just went to a neighborhood school, worked very hard, and become a shipping admin clerk. Right. In a way, the mother didn't like the daughter, second daughter achievement that much. Until one thing happened, one day something happened. You see, a mother found out she has breast cancer. Right. And throughout the whole treatment, one person who stays with her brought her medicine, take her to see the doctor, went through the treatment with her, pay, even pay for the whole treatment, was the second daughter. The one daughter that she always thought that an unachiever in life. But the elder daughter who, is, who has done so much, all she did was call up her mother, lip service, everything. And at that time, in my talk, and she said, one thing I want to do before I die is to say sorry to my daughter. Let me go on to the next one, uh, hang up of wedding photographs. This was a man who married for many years, 20 years. Now you remember, most people when they got married like to put a photograph on the wedding bed, you know. They are married for 20 years and every time the wife would nag at him, why don't you put a wedding photograph up, put a wedding photograph up. Uh, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it, but he never did. After my talk, he decided to do it. So he went home, right, secretly took all the photographs out went to the framer and framed the picture very nicely. So on one Saturday when the wife is out, she quickly brought the photograph back and hang it up on the, uh, behind the bed, you know. So, okay, she was so, he was so happy because finally he did it, you know. And the wife came home. The wife came, walked into the bedroom, the wife was so anxious, wow, you must see this, what I've done for you. Brought her to the bedroom, the wife looked at the photograph and ah! 
20 years ago and 20 years later, you are a very different person. Get it down, get it down, get it down. The wife took it down and the husband was very sad. But he did it. You know? Okay, there are also things like photographs in National Geographic. There was a young gentleman um, like, who works for a big accounting firm. He has been, from the age of seven, he has been taking photographs. Now must be in his 40s and he has a lot of photographs, right? So what happened now is he was hoping that one of his wish was actually have his photograph on National Geographic. By the way, I got an email from him. He sent 400 and photograph to the National Geographic. Hopefully you'll get it published. Uh, there are many stories I want to tell you, but the last one uh, is quite interesting. You see, in one of the talks I do for an insurance company, there was a young man and he says, uh, take father on a Ferrari. Most people didn't take consciously what he said, so he wrote down and he told me about it because his father is a bus driver and in his 60s just retired and he always loved to be loved the cars and the Ferrari and all that. And it's, he's, the son's wish is to see his father in a Ferrari. A few months later, I got an email from this boy. He said, in that talk, there was another gentleman who knows somebody, who knows somebody, who knows somebody, who knows somebody who have a Ferrari. And guess what? He got in touch with a young man and said, bring your father down with a passport. So the young man brought the father down to a place that the band described. So he went to the place with the passport. Guess what? The Ferrari came. Because it's two-seater, it took the dad, right, and can't see the son anyway. So it took the dad all the way up to Malaysia and back, and even throw in the lunch and come back. When the car came back, right, the son was in tears because finally he got a chance to achieve something for his dad. The father was in tears because in his life he never known that he has a chance to sit in a Ferrari. But the one who cried the loudest was the driver because he said something that he hasn't got, he never did a, had a chance to take his father on a Ferrari. And now he had to do it for somebody and he was very happy. This is something that has nothing to do with me. It's more to do with you, right? Sit down and write down the five things you want to do before you die. Seal it up. Nobody needs to know about it. Once in a while, you open up and you realize some of the dreams and some ambition will be achieved, right? So, I want to thank you very much and I hope that you must understand the last slide is the logic of life, which is what I brought to you in the beginning birth and death, you don't have a choice. You don't know when, when you die. You don't know, you're born, there's no choice. Between birth and death is living. And in the course of life, you do have a choice how you want to live your life. Thank you.